What's up? What well, is that? Well, about? Loic, you know, last year you said uh, prepare for the next 10 years because this, this year you want me to bring a lot of things that have something to do with the next 10 years. Yeah. First of all, congratulations on such a wonderful run at Le Web. Uh, thank you, Robert. But this is a uh, Oakley Airwave ski goggle, and that's one of the things I brought for you. We brought several firsts. We're the first uh, speaker to demonstrate the new Estimotes eye beacons. Where's your Google Glass? It's in my jacket. Ah, that's okay. another thing that I brought is this new uh, Scotty vest jacket that has all these pockets everywhere. Yep. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> and hold He's that. taking your wallet, so watch out. And I brought you uh, one of the guys who built the first iPhone. Andy Grignon is here so, on stage. You know, we have yeah. two phones. Now maybe you should have two Google Glass. I feel and underdressed. You can, uh, can watch <laughs> a porn movie on one. And, I, and uh, oh, I, I'm reading your email now. Cool. I also brought the Qualcomm Talk uh, watch. I think I'm the first one here at LeWeb to have the new, the new touch watch. <laughs> like, oh my god, this is heavy. It's a nice, uh, it's a nice thing, huh? Cool. It's like a clown car of gadgets. They just keep coming. But anyways, uh, I do you want me speech. to leave you? No, why don't you join us on stage? Because we're going to do a world first. We're going to launch a company I here at LeWeb. I cannot wait, but I'll leave you the stage. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> so Andy's going to set up our estimates, and I'm going to give a little talk uh, about what, what I saw happening over the last 18 months. And it came out in this book called Age of Context. We're seeing uh, five new things happen at the same time. And let's talk about what those forces are that are changing what's possible uh, over the next 10 years. So we're seeing an exponential rise in sensors. We're, there's four sensors in that Oakley ski goggle that shows you where you are on the mountain, how long your uh, hang time was, how fast you're going, stuff like that. Uh, we're all carrying an iPhone that has, or a, an Android phone that has seven to nine sensors on it, right? The second force is wearables. You're getting some sense that we're now carrying or wearing things on our wrist, on our face, and soon we're going to have shirts that have sensors and shoes that have sensors in them. Uh, so we're going to be wearing things that are interacting with our mm. world. The third force is our location databases are getting richer and richer every day because of what we all are doing on Waze or Foursquare uh, or Google Maps or Facebook check-ins like we just did backstage. And we're seeing an exponential rise in the amount of social data that is out there. Uh, you know, Facebook today has half a, half a billion tweets, or I'm sorry, Twitter has half a billion tweets a day, and that's doubling. And when we come back to the web next year, it probably will be around a billion tweets a day. And the fifth force is data. Uh, and I, I just started seeing a lot of companies come to my studio um, that had something to do with databases. You know, DataSIF just got funded for $40 million last, this last week. But we're seeing uh, Hadoop now being adopted at companies worldwide. Uh, and that didn't exist, you know, six years ago when I wrote my first book with Shell Israel. Uh, we're seeing um, all sorts of things going on. You know, when you visit a company now, they usually have a team of data uh, machine learning experts who are trying to see a new pattern in the stream going by. So what does this mean? When you take these five things together and mix them up, it's a new, it, it means we can build a new kind of contextual operating system. And Google's actually working on one, and I, I'm pretty sure Apple is as well. They are going to, your phone in, in the future is going to know whether you're shopping or driving or running or walking or in a meeting or on a stage or all sorts of different contexts or skiing with your Oakley ski goggle. And that means that it's going to change our lives in a deep way. Um, for us, our products are going to get highly personalized. This Oakley ski goggle is my ski goggle. It has my data on it. When you put it on, it, it doesn't have your data. It's very, very personalized to the, to the level that soon there's going to be a camera in this thing. Uh, Oakley's team told me a little bit about what they're thinking of. And they're going to even tell you what lens to put on the glass, because you can take the lenses out and put different lenses. It's very personalized to you. The second thing is, we now are able to build a new kind of software that wasn't possible before, one that uh, anticipates our needs 
and gets ahead of us, right? Google now is a, 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 the best first example of this. It, on the way here yesterday, it told me that I better leave because there's a lot of traffic. Um, and and it, we are gonna see a range of software that does that in a deep way, and we're gonna talk about that with Andy in a minute. For our businesses, it has two impacts that are also deep. It means that our businesses are gonna see everything about everything. When you think about Travis who runs Uber, he was on stage yesterday, he can see every, uh, every employee, every piece of inventory, every transaction, every customer in real time on his mobile phone. And he can understand the context of what forced the sale you know, for instance, he should know already when LeWeb is getting out and should have some extra cars here automatically, right? Uh, General Electric is putting uh, uh, sensors on all the uh, uh, engines that it's making. Uh, Union Pacific is putting sensors in the railway. They're seeing 40 million uh, hits off those sensors already per day, and they can tell uh, uh, based on what's rolling over it, whether that thing, the car needs um, maintenance a month beforehand, right? Just by how it sounds. And so sensors are changing what we think of in business and what's possible. And then the second thing it, ha it means for business is we are gonna need to know our customers in far a deeper uh, co context. We're going to need to know our customer in a far deeper way than we do today. You know, Andy and I live near the uh, Half Moon Bay Ritz, uh, the Ritz Carlton, and we just met with their executive team. And today they have four computers that run that property. They don't really talk to each other. They really don't know what Andy and I drink every time we go there. And they should, right? <laughs> Because, and I know they don't, because when we go to the Ritz in London, they have no clue who we are and what we like to do and what we like to drink. This was not how the Ritz started out, by the way. It, it, we, we heard the story of how the Ritz started out. The first Ritz had a room with index cards. And when you went into the Ritz, they would write down on that index card everything about you. Uh, how many kids you have, what your favorite meal is, uh, are you allergic to foods, uh, what kind of music do you like, what, et cetera, et cetera, right? They would know you at a very deep level because that's customer service. That's what, why they would be the highest customer service company in the world, right? And we're going to see a new, a new world where we're going to have to study our customers in a whole new way. So let's talk about why we brought these estimates out here and, and why now we can do a new kind of customer service or a new kind of marketing. We call it uh, pinpoint marketing. And the old marketing, when I ran a camera store in Silicon Valley, I'd have to advertise in the San Jose Mercury News to everybody just to find the 50 people who were gonna buy a camera that weekend or 500 people, whatever it was. And there was a lot of wastage and I wouldn't hit you at the right time with the right message. Today, uh, because of your phone, I, I, you know, with a new uh, iPhone set, uh, with the new iPhone, you have a motion sensor in it. I know your context. Moves right now knows that I'm sitting down. <laughs> I, I use this app on Moves on an iPhone. That's really cool. In the future, you're going to actually know that you walked into a store or were hanging out with your friend, thanks to these new low-energy Bluetooth radios. Uh, here, the picture that you're seeing is of a 3D sensor made by PrimeSense. Apple just bought this company last week, right? And this sensor is so sensitive, so accurate, it can see your hand moving toward a box of Cheerios. And it knows before your hand hits the Cheerios that you're about to buy that box of Cheerios or at least uh, ex examine it. And it can watch you pull that box of Cheerios and put it in your shopping cart and do stuff. Um, we are heading into a new world where we are going to be tracked and examined in a new way. So what are these little radios? Uh, these are called low energy Bluetooth radios or smart Bluetooth. They uh, cost about $10 wholesale. The ones we have are $33 each, I think. Uh, they spit a number into the air. They're just sitting there spitting a number into the air every second. And we can speed that uh, rate up or slow it down. My iPhone can tell how close it is to the, one of those radios, and we can now do a new kind of software. Is, has anybody ever, does anybody have one of these in their pocket, by the way? You, you all, a good 40% of you do. How many people have an iPhone with iOS 7 on it? 
Yeah, uh, at, at least 60% of you. You already have one of these in your pocket and you didn't even know it. You have to turn it on so it do, and then a software guy like Andy has to do something to make it useful. And we're gonna show you that, that right now. Um, Andy? Robert? How are you doing? <laughs> good, good. So you've been working for, well, first of all, tell me a little bit about your history and um, where you came from. I came from, I was at Apple for, uh, for about 11 years. And in that time, I was uh, fortunate enough to build uh, products like iChat and Dashboard. Uh, and then a few of us got together and we started uh, the iPhone project. Uh, once we shipped that, uh, thank you, thank you. You've heard of it, 40% of you have. <laughs> Uh, after we shipped iPhone, uh, I went over to a company uh, called Palm, and we uh, came up with this new thing called WebOS. And WebOS was an extension of, of Dashboard. Instead of taking widgets that lived you know, on your desktop, we brought it into a whole mobile operating system. Uh, and then WebOS didn't really do so well. Uh, we got acquired by HP. And um, after that uh, concluded, uh, I started a company with some friends. And so, what have you been doing for the last couple of years? Uh, we've, when we started uh, our company, it's called Aitly. Uh, Aitly is a product that has, is the result of about 20 years of, of all of our experience uh, building mobile platforms and operating systems, user experience, ex different kinds of, of uh, big picture platform your, products. Your designer designed a few things. He designed the, uh, the iPod Classic. Uh, he built and uh, designed a lot of, I think he is. Bill, you're over here somewhere. Bill? And, uh, but he's also you know, one of the few people that can uh, articulate a platform level user experience. So we all got together and uh, thought it would be kind of fun to do something really hard. You know, when you build products like the iPhone and, and the pre-Web OS, uh, you get addicted uh, to creating that next big thing. And when you don't, it's kind of a letdown. Uh, and so what we wanted to do wasn't just um, another way to, to buy uh, sunglasses. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but we're not sunglass guys. Uh, I'm not a hat guy. I should be. But, um, but there's not a, um, what we wanted to do was create a new way uh, to really move the needle and embrace uh, what we originally set out to do way back when when we had Dashboard. Why did we do Dashboard? It was because at the time we wanted to enable regular people to build stuff for Mac OS. The regular people at the time were people that knew how to do JavaScript and HTML, and, and guess what? It turns out those aren't regular people either. Uh, so how do, we, uh, how do we embrace kind of our, our, um, what we set out to be, which was allowing you know, the proverbial mom uh, to create stuff? and not be limited by uh, the tools uh, that are out there, which are way over everybody's head. So how do you do that? So that's what we set out to do with Aitly. Um, well, we've got a fancy little uh, clip. I'm going to just skip ahead. So Aitly, what we uh, set out to do, uh, Aitly allows you to instantly create personal channels that transcends a device family. Now, there's this idea of uh, responsive web pages. Well, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a mobile first, a truly native experience. When you go and create something, how does it work on everything from your phone, your tablet, and your TV? It's a really hard problem to solve. And maybe a Google Glass in the future. And a glass and a or watch and a, and a this, that. <laughs> you don't get a body like this by knowing uh, what ski goggles are. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so that was the first thing we set out to do. Uh, but we also understand that uh, to create, to have that level of flexibility, uh, that's not for everybody. So what we actually start off with is you know, a series of pre-made channels that you can customize. It's like filling in your resume on LinkedIn. It's just simply uh, filling out a form. But more importantly, we allow you to build off of you know, really big building blocks. Back in the day, there was something called HyperCard. HyperCard was this crazy thing where you would drop buttons and pictures and stuff like that. Uh, but the problem is HyperCard, or that, that level uh, of, of design, doesn't work. You can't put a button and then have it work on, on a Google Glass. How do you solve that problem? It's really hard, but uh, I'm really excited to show you how we did it.
Can we see it? Yes, we can. Um, Last thing, uh, the, we allow you to create these channels. Uh, you can publish them uh, at any time, on any topic, in a few minutes. Uh, we're going to make one now. Um, and so let's uh, hope the demo gods are with us, and, and let's see um, what we've been up to. This is coming out next year, so it's a sneak peek. It's not a launch, really. We're teasing you a little. I'm just going to show a little bit of leg on this one, and then uh, we're going to make the software available for everybody uh, early next year. So cool. let's Come take a look. Over here. So what do you got? What do you? What are we going to see here? So we're going to see a couple of things. I've just got, I've just got shit all over this table. So what I'm going to do is clean it up a bit. We have um, some beacons because we really wanted to harness the power of of these of these beacons. At the same time, uh, I wanted to show you a little bit of how the uh, how the development uh, and the authoring environment works. So I'm going to just focus on that a little bit. So can you guys see this? Yep. Good. The, well, they'll put it up on the screen. All right. Second. Um, so, this is Aitley. Uh, this is um, a very simple uh, template, which is just something to share with your friends. If you wanted to create something like this, um, you would just fill out the form. I'm going to go a little bit deeper and show you something a little more interesting. Uh, this is how you create something from scratch uh, with our platform. And so you have this form. Um, you can fill out a couple of things, but we're just going to go straight to it. Every channel inside of Ailey starts off with one of these little red cards. When I tap on it, I can just give it a name, you know, uh, Le Web. Yeah. When I first saw you pitch this, you actually had a deck of cards I that did. you were uh, pitching me, and, and that was really interesting. I did, yeah. And that's, what we've done with this is, is we've turned uh, building new experiences into a game. So if you can play a game like bridge or poker or, or blackjack, any kind of card game that has rules, then you'll be able to understand how to create completely new experiences. Uh, so these are just some of the cards that we've built. Uh, but everything here is represented uh, by a card. It doesn't get any more complicated than that. No really code. friendly. There's no code. No there's HTML. no logic. Let's go ahead and start something out here. Um, this is as complicated as it gets. Again, if you don't want to fill out the form and have your slideshow for your friends, this is one how you craft something from scratch. Um, I'm going to do a couple of things. We won't actually let you create something that can't work. Part of one of these, uh, one of the problems is how do you guarantee success uh, to somebody? Uh, you know, when you create a PowerPoint slide deck or a keynote slide deck, you're not sitting there debugging how things work. The hardest it gets is why did my little sparkly text not, not fly in just the right way? So we've eliminated all of that. So um, I'm going to just play a couple of things here. We're going to start by making this channel. I'm going to take my city theme uh, card, and I've now just themed my channel. It doesn't do anything yet, though. Um, so to start off with, we're going to just uh, take a look at our structure. You see how they're all kind of color coded to tell you what can go where. And if you ever get confused, you can just hit that button. We're going to start off with a little introduction. So I'm going to take this card here, drop it on there. This card has a title, so I'm going to just say uh, bonjour. And you know, I've got a French last name, but I don't know any French, uh, and I've got no accent. Um, so bonjour. Let's say um, uh, eight li at le web. So we've now created, with no work, an introduction screen. Uh, let's start filling it out with stuff. It just has a menu item, but, but really what we want is some content. And so these content cards uh, have a bunch of different stuff you can do. You notice there's nothing really detailed here like put a button. It's like, I want a discussion, or I want some calendar data or pictures. So um, will we go ahead and take a calendar on there? I happen to use Google uh, for my calendar, so my calendar events come from Google. I just drop it. So we now have a screen with some Google. But let's make it a little more interesting. Let's take some enhancements. I want a, a little bit of content at the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to take that. Just go ahead and drop it on there. When I look at that, I want it to be short. And what do I want there? Hmm. I want some, uh, how about some quotes? I can just drag it. It'll go. Where are the quotes coming from? They're going to come from Twitter. What are we looking for? How about uh, the web? So we have now just created something. Let's take a quick look. We'll hit the preview button. Now, there's our city-themed uh, bonjour, Aitley at the web. There's my calendar for the day. And these are live tweets coming in. Uh, this, thank you. 
This has never been done before. This is bringing together live, contextually relevant data. But let's go a little bit further because we're not done yet. Um, we're going to back out of this now. Back to our back to our screen over here. We've had uh, we had our welcome screen, but let's go someplace. Um, let's go ahead and pull up a scene. This is a river of content. Kind of an awkward sounding thing, but it's pretty cool. Uh, so what we're going to do is build up a couple things here. We're going to take um, what's in our river. You can have rivers of people or audio tracks. It doesn't matter. But we're going to take some pictures. So let's take our pictures card. Where our picture is coming from? Oh, Flickr sounds kind of cool. So let's put that. Now, what kind of pictures while well, we're here in Paris? Love this city, so I'm going to just say Paris. Great. Now, I really like that other thing I did before with that little bottom uh, bit of content. Whoops. I got to go back one. See, it didn't let me do that, so I dragged something. It said, nah, you don't get to do that. You get to play that card uh, on this scene. So got some content at the bottom. I want it to be nice and tall. Let's put some stuff in there. Let's put. Uh, well, let's see here. Let's. We've got some. Can like, we show off the beacons because we're uh, over time? Oh, we are. Okay, we're going to load it up. See, that's the beacon card. This people right here. Uh, this is a special Eightly uh, construct. Uh, let's take some quotes, and uh, I'm going to do some quotes. We're going to find Paris quotes, but it's playing all those existing content. Now let's take a look at what we've built. Back to the screen. Everything is live, but now we've got a getting started button. When I tap it. Uh, we've got now a river of content from Paris. Um, I'm right here. <laughs> we've got a bug. Jeremy's right there. Robert's right here. It's pulsing because uh, I'm present. Uh, we have coffee with Robert. We've got tweets coming in live. And then as Robert gets in the kind of the close uh, zone, he's going to start you know, throbbing. Uh, <laughs> and then <laughs> it sounds dirty because it is. Uh, but the point here is we've now just made a channel bringing together data from Twi you know, Flickr, Twitter, um, Google, and uh, we've made a very rich experience. These can now be published. I can say this channel that I've just made is only available if you're in Paris, uh, only during the three days of the web, uh, and that's it. Yeah. So. And this, uh, what's underneath is a lot of complexity because this can be moved to the phone and to the... Uh, and to other yep. formats like a watch that's going to come out next year, right? Everything that we've just made, you notice I haven't looked about, there's nothing about 30-point uh, Helvetica, whatever. We've abstracted all that away so that it'll look gorgeous on a phone, not just by making it smaller, but by reflowing the entire thing. And when you look at it at you know, 10 feet on a TV, it looks completely different as well. But you don't have to worry about that. We take care of all that. So this represents probably um, you know, the most challenging project uh, that I think all of, all of us have worked on. I uh, can't wait to bring it to you guys uh, for a download next year. And where do we get year. it? What's that? Where do we get it? 8Lee.com and the Apple App Store. It will be available soon. All right, cool. We got to get off stage. We got to get, get off stage. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Loeb. Thank you for nine years. It's been an nine? awesome time. Why nine? Ten. Well, I missed one year. True. I missed one year. I missed the. Pension. Yeah, I. Uh, I don't know what we were doing. You, you, you've been to all of them, right? Uh, except, except the first one. year. No, the first year I was here when it was 400 people Whoops. in the audience. So congratulations on the success. Thank you, Robert. And uh, you know, it's uh, part of a success is because you came all those years. Seriously. Thank so you. thank you, Robert. Thanks.